with the patient would discuss multiple other options available. And there are. But before alternative treatment can begin, the Mohs defects must be closed. And reconstruction, the final step in the Mohs process, must be carried out with extreme precision. Once the margins are clear, reconstruction begins. With simple cases, reconstruction can be done by the same dermatologist that excised the cancer. There are certain Mohs procedures or Mohs defects which can be easily closed in the dermatologist's office. And the majority of dermatologists will close their own Mohs defects in the office. SCARS has become a center for difficult to treat skin cancers. From a plastic surgeon's perspective, when we first see the patient after Mohs surgery is completed, um, it's a time of planning and discussion with the patient. Due to its case-by-case -case nature, reconstruction can vary widely in difficulty and complexity. These levels of difficulty are often represented as a ladder, with the lower rungs being the least complex, and the higher rungs representing closures that must be performed by a specially trained reconstructive surgeon. At the first rung, reconstruction is done by the body itself, allowing the defect to heal on its own. This, however, takes time and is used mostly on smaller wounds. The next step up the, that reconstructive ladder is something we call primary closure. And so often all that means is that there's a, a circle or an oval of missing skin. And we change the shape of that by cutting a little extra skin on either side and making like a football or an elliptical shape and then we undermine or release the skin edges and then suture very carefully the edges together. Dr. Danes is a board-certified facial plastic surgeon who specializes in both cosmetic and reconstructive surgery. Performing cosmetic surgery makes me a better reconstructive surgeon and also vice versa. And so obviously my, my cosmetic surgery patients have a very high aesthetic ideal and a very high aesthetic goal. And so that same mindset I have when I'm, when I'm doing cosmetic surgery, I carry over to my Mohs reconstructions. In the case of the Skin Cancer and Reconstructive Surgery Center's latest patient, an abnormally large six-level Mohs excision on the scalp, two large defects were created. This necessitated the need for a higher-level procedure to optimally reconstruct the defects. Uh, we used a flap technique to reconstruct the defect and the closure was done actually quite simply with surgical staples that achieve a quick and easy uh, closure, uh, quick healing and they're removed simply a week later and the patient can start his physical activity and physical exertion as soon as 72 hours after surgery. Flap is essentially borrowing skin from next door to where the defect is, making special cuts in the skin that enable us to then bring that new skin in to fill in the defect. However, the treatment for this patient does not end with the closure of these defects, as many other cancerous and precancerous lesions were found on the patient's scalp. The case was presented to the specialist at the SCAR Center Monthly Tumor Conference for discussion. Many options were considered during the conference, with each specialist using their diverse medical backgrounds to work toward finding the optimal solution to the patient's unique issue. In this case, the solution was a topical treatment that the patient could apply on their own. The physicians at SCARS were able to monitor the treatment through pictures and video calls, allowing the patient's life to remain almost completely uninterrupted. Finally, after months of treatment and hard work, the determined Mohs team at SCAR Center were able to confidently clear the patient of any skin cancers and be sure that their efforts had cured another patient. With such effective results, it's hard to imagine that Mohs surgery has not always been a widely respected procedure. Mohs surgery gets its name from Dr. Frederick Mohs of Madison, Wisconsin. Dr. Mose treated his first patient with Mose surgery in 1936, at the young age of 26, setting the foundation for what would be one of the most influential cancer treatments of the century. From the very beginning, the excision, slicing, staining, and microscopic examination techniques were used, the modern procedure only differing slightly from the one performed by Dr. Mose almost 100 years ago. It 
it slowly caught on. It took, takes doctors a while to accept some new technique. Uh, the data was so good, it was not thought to be accurate. In the mid-1970s, Theodore Tramovich, who had studied under Dr. Mose, published an article on the procedure. The article finally garnered the respect the procedure deserved, and in the 80s, the newly formed ACMS, or American College of Mohs Surgery, began to sponsor formal fellowships with Dr. Mose to train new Mohs dermatologists. I finished my residency in 1988, uh, and I asked my program director if I could spend the last couple of weeks of my residency in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, where Dr. Mose had originated the procedure. And so I stayed in the, the local dormitory in Madison, Wisconsin in the summer of 1988. And there I met Dr. Mose, and what an inspiration. He was full of life. He was in his 80s at the time, I believe. And uh, he was so anxious to share this knowledge with everyone. Anyone who had ears to listen, he wanted to share it with everyone. Dr. Frederick E. Mose passed away in 2002 at the age of 92, having watched his discovery become a widely used and respected procedure after decades of unrecognized success. In the present, the procedure that bears his name continues to help millions of people live longer and healthier lives. Mohs surgery, from the moment the patient walks in, is about curing skin cancers. To achieve this goal, it takes a team like that at Scar Center that consists of dermatologists, Mohs technicians, reconstructive surgeons, and a small army of surgical technicians, medical assistants, nurses, and clerical staff to ensure that at the end of the day, patients can leave knowing they have been treated with the utmost care and that their skin cancers have been cured.